What's up, my stats stars? Let's talk about a free response question that you're going to see on this year's AP Statistics exam. This question is going to deal with inference. Typically, this is the fourth question, or at least it has been the last couple of years. Now, on this question, you're either gonna to have to do a confidence interval to estimate a population parameter, or you're gonna to have to do a significance test to determine if you have significant evidence that an alternative hypothesis is true. Now, here's the key thing you wanna keep in mind for either one of these techniques. Four steps, at least how, that's how I like to think about it. Step one, naming the procedure. Be very clear here and use context. For example, you could say this is gonna be a one sample Z test for a population proportion of people that recycle or a one sample T interval for the population mean size of a ball bearing, something along those lines. If it's a test, you wanna make sure you have those hypotheses in that first step as well. Now, step two is all about checking those conditions. Samples gotta be random to avoid bias. Sample size has to be less than 10% of the population to assume independence. And we need our samples to be big enough. That way we could use an approximate normal or T distribution. Now, if you're working with proportions, big enough means you need 10 or more successes and 10 or more failures in your sample. Or if you're working with means, big enough can mean a couple things. Well, actually, any size is big enough if your population is known to be normal. Otherwise, the central limit theorem says to be big enough, we need 30 or more in our sample. Or we can also be under 30 as long as we check our data and make sure there's no major skewness or outliers. But knowing those conditions and writing them out is going to really pay off on the exam. Now, if you're doing a confidence interval, the third step is actually building that interval. So again, this is where you're really gonna use that AP stats formula sheet because it's got the generic formula on it. The generic formula for a confidence interval is starting off with a sample statistics, something you observed, add and subtract the margin of error, which is a combination of the critical value times the standard error. Now, the critical value is your T star or Z star that you're gonna get from your calculator or your normal tables. And then the standard error, well, that all depends what you're working with. One sample proportion, one sample mean, difference between two proportions, difference between two, two means, or maybe even slope. Now, the formulas for standard error are on the back or the second page of the AP sets form machine. All you gotta know is what you're looking for, and then in that final column are all the different formulas for standard error. And then the fourth step to a conference interval is make sure you interpret the interval. This is where you start off by saying, hey, I'm 95% confident that the true population proportion of people that recycle is somewhere between 30 and 40%. But make sure you write that again in context. Now, if you're doing a significance test, the third step is all about getting that test statistic and that corresponding p-value. Now, the generic formula for a test statistic is on the AP sets formula sheet. You're gonna take a sample statistic, something you observed, minus the population parameter that comes from your null hypothesis, what you believe to be true, divided by, you guessed it, the standard error. So once again, use that formula sheet so you use the right formula for the right standard error for that particular problem. Then you're gonna use normal CDF if it's a Z-score or TCDF if it's a T-score to calculate your P-value, the probability that your observed statistic occurs or more extreme on the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Finally, you have to make your conclusion. If your p-value is below your significance level, well below one or 5%, you're gonna reject the null, which means you do have statistically significant evidence to go with the alternative. If your p-value is above your alpha level, above one or above 5%, that's when you fail to reject the null, which means you do not have enough evidence to go with the alternative. We do not say that we accept the null hypothesis. We simply say we do, do not have enough evidence to go with the alternative. Again, we're not concluding that the, that the null is true. We're just saying we, you know, we're always looking for the alternative. We just don't have enough of that evidence to go with that alternative. So again, problem four is going to be about inference. So make sure you know those procedures. Now, the final thing that it could be is a chi-score test as well. So make sure you're familiar with a chi-score test for homogeneity, a chi-score test for independence, which means you see a two-way table and you're asked about an association, or you're asked about if there's a difference between your samples, or the other thing it could be is a chi-score test for goodness of fit. So again, just make sure you're prepared for that, but even if it's one of those tests, it's still gonna follow four rules. Name the procedure, check the conditions, get that p-value, and then make a conclusion based on that p-value. So hopefully you can ace that fourth, well, it's again, typically the fourth question, at least it has been the last couple of years, for inference.